Okay. The audio on this is probably going to be not that great. This is my second channel, just in case you didn't notice. This is not like a main channel video. I've been watching a lot of daily vloggers and I feel like I just want to, I don't know, record what's happening. Joe and I have managed to accidentally become nocturnal. So it's currently like six in the afternoon and I am fully wide awake because I just woke up. I feel slightly uncomfortable being on camera because I haven't been making that many videos this year. Joe, Kate, and I put together a small garden bed because I just want to grow plants. Plants grow so well here and this morning we bought a bunch of garden soil so I've got to fill it and I want to do that before it gets too dark. And I figured I might as well just show you the cute little garden bed and all of the potential that Joe's backyard has. So right now Joe's backyard is very empty which means that there is a lot of potential for me to grow plants. And I can also show you the plants that I've been growing in his um, sunroom, his little like patio area. So I guess actually I'll start from over here. We've got water pooling that we need to take care of. So I've been trying to grow microgreens and I put them in various different places around this room because I'm hoping that I will be able to determine the best place for growing them. These were some squash. You can see I've got like a couple going, but they're so small. A big part of the reason that all of this isn't growing very well is because it's in a windowed space and windows block out UV. I've got this one open to try and let a little bit more light in, but like you can see these plants are really struggling. This was like a watermelon, a tomato plant. This is some mint that I got from Joe's mom. This is a Kiwano jelly melon. It's uh, the only one that I got off of the plant before the plant died. These are cucumbers and a loofah gourd. As you can see, they're just kind of like suffering. They're not, they're not having a great time. I might try adjusting them to outside light and just start growing them outside, but I'm not sure yet. These tomato plants are pretty sad. Um, this is an okra. And then this is what's left of the Kiwano jelly melon plant. And you can see it has like a little bit of life left in it. A lot of this I'm kind of debating just pulling up and reusing the soil. This is a Malabar spinach plant. It's doing relatively well, again, considering that it's indoors. And a bunch of microgreens that are doing relatively well, but microgreens are pretty easy to grow. And then over here I've got a trash can full of potatoes that I still need to finish filling. So I've been reusing soil with these potatoes, and because of that there was a pea that hadn't sprouted, but when I threw it in here it started growing. So I've also got a random little pea plant growing out of the middle of there. And then over here I have all my other microgreens. These are like all broccoli. These are essentially an experiment because I've never grown microgreens before and I wanted to see how easy it was. And so far it seems pretty darn easy. I think I might harvest one of these trays and just make ramen, but I don't know. So outside, this grass isn't planted. It just kind of grows naturally. It is groomed, but I want to show you this. So these are some okra that I planted just kind of haphazardly because this was just hanging here and it's doing better than any of the plants. Oops. Oh, Jesus. The bugs are also huge here. Anyway, I planted this just kind of haphazardly and I haven't really been watering it the same way I've been taking care of everything that's inside. It's just mostly been watered by rain. Look at it, it's growing a teeny okra. And it's doing so well. I planted this weeks after everything else. It's such a nice space. The fence got knocked down from the storm, but we're not really worrying about it. That's the garden bed that we built. It's very small. It's just a start because I'm about to go back to Washington, so I can't invest too much in gardening stuff, but it's nice. It's just like a nice little garden bed. So I'm gonna fill it up and probably plant some zucchinis and some chives. And then there's this like, little platform that we talked about possibly putting a greenhouse over because it's pretty solid. But yeah, look at all of this space and plants just grow really well here. So I feel like I should plant some stuff. I kind of knew that it wouldn't be enough soil to fill the whole thing, 
but it is enough to give me an idea of how much I need. So this is three bags. This bed is two six inch boards on top of each other. So that's like one foot high. So probably four bags would be enough to fill it halfway. So I probably need four more bags because I'm not planning to fill it all the way up to the brim, but that is a start. You can hear the cicadas. Good. Yeah. So who is it from? Um, but it's from Canada. Something from Canada. Uh, a bunch of stickers. Ooh. Wait, this is from the Mercs of Mischief. I recognize these characters. Mercs of Mischief? They're a D and D group uh, that I play with sometimes and they stream. Ooh. Is it a hat or a shield? Wait, it is a shield. It's a lark buckler. It's a lark shield. What? Oh my gosh! The Mercs of Mischief sent me lark a lark thing. Nice. It's that's, a lark buckler. That's a nice shield. Yeah. I love him so much. Use it with my lark sword. Yes! Weren't you looking for a shield? Yeah. Wait, what? Weren't you looking for a shield? Because they didn't have any when we were at... Or any ones that I liked. What was the last... No, it was Gen Con. Gen Con. Or, yeah, any that shields liked. that you liked. Yeah, because they were weird. This is cool, though. It's probably lark safe. It's made of foam. Plus, I would I think so. I don't think the shield needs to be. Yeah, I don't think the shield needs sword, to be. But... Yeah, because it's mostly for self defense. Yeah! A shield. Nice! <laughs> I'm glad it made it in one piece because the box looked pretty messed up. This is Beans? Oh my god, is this Canadian is maple can syrup? Wait, did they, they send you a can of maple syrup? I think so. Right Every now. Canadian friend I have, they're like, you haven't had syrup unless you've had. Canadian syrup. Like real maple real syrup. Real maple syrup, yeah. Yeah, look, it's even got the maple leaves on it. That's how you know it's Canadian. Maple syrup, 100% pure. Pure Canadian. Pure Canadian. Wow. Is it like liquidy? Shake it. Yeah. I'm interested to see what it awesome. tastes like. That's interesting. It comes canned. That's kind of weird. Uh, token stickers for D&D. &D. Oh. Nice bags. We need to have an IRL D and D session. <laughs> we do. I've got so. We much have so much stuff for it. Stuff. It's like a Ren Fair dice bag. Oh, it's minis. Ooh. Mini figs. Yeah, we need to have like a, an IRL. Wow. Oh, it's a little goblin. Yeah. Oh, my fingers are still dirty from That's the okay. dirt. I don't mind your dirty dirt fingers. <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah, because I've got a lot of minis. I've got like, and the letter. Yeah, that's their logo. Dear Joe Cat, you have been an incredible friend to me and my team ever since the first time we had you on the stream. Since then, I have vowed to myself to find a way to repay your kindness in some way. So I have taken the opportunity to send you this care package. It's not much. A sword and a shield, a can of maple syrup, and a few of my gob uh, goons goblin miniatures. Wait, a sword? Is there a sword in here? Did the sword fall out? Oh, it might have. That's okay. I have a large sword. The box had like has like a massive hole in yeah, it. Yeah, it might have fallen out, but that's okay. That's more more than enough. But yeah, that's like this is so wonderful. Really, I just wanted to say thank you. It, it may not seem like it, but you said yes to us many times when you didn't have to, and such a small gesture means more than you may think. You sent me those magic cards that brought me so much joy. I believe you are a good man, and beyond any professional collaborations, I consider you a friend. I realize it's a bit old-fashioned to send a care package and a letter, but it, uh, it felt appropriate. The Mercenaries of Mischief team, and Sean Good. Oh, fuck. Aww. Aww. Wow. That's so wholesome. I gotta send him a message. Wow. That's so nice. That's so great. Thank you for letting me film you. Yeah. Like, you can see the graphics were very basic. It didn't have, like... It was just blocks. It was just blocky square rooms. <laughs> and you just shot Nazis. I mean, even the character looks very similar to the character in uh, in Doom, the guy in the middle. So thing. this one came first? This one came first, yes. And it's a lot more primitive. You can see there's, like, nothing in the environment. Yeah, see, this was more like... Uh, I need to find the maze game that I'm talking about, because it looked exactly like this. Yeah, because people were copying id. But then Doom comes out... And now it's like, whoa, it's like there are pillars and windows and outside, and it's not just blocky rooms anymore. It's so funny, because you can see the inspiration for, like, modern first-person shooters. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Doom didn't have mouse and keyboard. What Doom had was you use the arrow keys, and you use spacebar to shoot. There is no looking up and down. I cannot look up and down, and even though the, this cursor right now is above the barrel... There's just forward, yep. back... I shoot it, even though I shot above the barrel, the barrel exploded, because it's like... 
It's 2D, essentially. Yeah. It looks 3D, but really it's 2D. And also, one thing you'll notice is there's no reloading. You just have a lot of ammo in your gun. Oh. Reloading was not a thing in FPS until much later. There's a power-up right there. This game just had power-ups. <laughs> Why is it here? Who knows? Yeah, big atmosphere building. Hey, look, wheelchair access. Oh, nice. The SR2 is more like a... <laughs> Science! Gordon. Look, Gordon, I'm right. We can use these to help me, Gordon. It's the next day. I have no idea how good or bad the framing in this is because my front-facing camera is kind of broken, so I'm having to use my back-facing camera right now. It's officially June 1st, which means it's Pride Month. On the off chance you don't know, I consider myself to be asexual. I've got tons of videos about that. I will link a couple somewhere on the screen. So for a very long time, I've had this really strange kind of idea that sounds like it could be true, but it could also not be. I'm not entirely sure. So I would like to hear your opinion about it if you are also asexual, or even if you're not. Like I went to a fairly religious high school and I remember them handing out abstinence pledges for everyone. And I remember like, because I'm asexual, but at the time did not know it, being able to sign it and just being like, yeah, this is easy. Like it's hard. And of course now I realize I'm asexual, but at the time I just thought that everyone else was really weird. That it was really weird that everyone else was like having sex in high school and getting boyfriends and girlfriends and all of that stuff. And I just wanted to draw and hang out with friends and stuff. I think that it's possible that some of the people who tend to be more prudishly religious, people who feel like you shouldn't have sex until you're married, um, people who are very pro-abstinence, pro-abstinence pledges, things like that, and anti-LGBT might actually be asexual and not realize it. I don't know, it's just a weird thought that I had years ago and it's kind of like worked its way into my brain and it just, it feels so plausible that there's a chance that people who tend to be slightly anti-LGBT don't realize they might actually just be asexual and that hatred that they are feeling is actually the feeling of being outcast and they don't realize it. They don't realize that it feels like everyone else is wrong, but it's actually that they are not like everyone else. Growing up in a fairly religious community, I remember not having sex, not being sexual was the default, particularly for teenagers. It was supposed to be the like respectable thing. So if you were having sex or being attracted to people, then you were being a bad kid. And I remember that came very easily to me. It came very easily to just not be attracted to people. And so I thought, oh, maybe I'm just like better than them. And I feel like there are some slightly more prudish individuals who just latched onto that feeling of superiority. And rather than coming to terms with the fact that they are actually the ones who are different, that they are asexual, and the rest of the world is not like that, and then becoming like sex positive and being more knowledgeable of their own wants and desires. Instead, they just latched onto that superiority and decided the rest of the world is just sinful or wrong, while also trying to convince themselves that they are straight. There's like this weird level of like deniability when someone is asexual, where they could have an invisible sexuality to themselves. I think it's also a reasonable defense for more asexual inclusion in LGBT education, because maybe if those people understood their feelings, they might realize that they are not straight and then not impose that non-sexuality on other people. I don't know, it's just a weird idea that I've had for a couple years that I've kind of been trying to like suss out and I want to know your thoughts about it. The audio on this is probably gonna be garbage. I've got to go water some plants. Um, we managed to be able to wake up at a reasonable hour. We got up at like 8 a.m. which is like a good hour to be awake. So our sleeping schedules are getting better. I've got some other stuff I need to do today. I've been doing a lot of typing and writing and then I'm also working on a video where I did another doll repaint. It's a, like a knockoff Monster High doll. So that, that'll be mildly interesting. But yeah, I just wanted to talk 
to you for a little bit. I felt like making a vlog type video. I haven't been doing much with this second channel, so I kind of want to just, I don't know, make random videos just to kind of let you know what's going on during the day. Thanks for hanging out. I will see you guys later. Bye.